What's God's perspective? God created sex for your enjoyment. That's first. It's pretty obvious that it's not just for procreation. If you look at the design of a man's body and the design of a woman's body, a man can come to orgasm without penetrating the woman, and a woman can come to orgasm without being penetrated. So therefore, sex isn't just for procreation. Agreed? It's got to be for other purposes. Now, if we have injuries with regard to sexuality, and we have injuries with regard to sex itself, that is going to prevent us from becoming at one with God. Do we understand that? So how many of you before have thought, oh, this sex issue, I can just avoid it. Like, I can get around it, I can sort of manoeuvre it. How many of you have felt like you really don't like sex at all? How many feel that way, that you really don't like sex at all? Quite, just a few? Okay. How many of you feel like sex is good, but, but you didn't realise that if, that if you had an injury regarding it, you would never get to be at one with God? So how many of us realise it? So that's the majority. Okay. So this is a truth of God, that while we have an injury with regarding sex, we have an injury in our relationship with God. So we need to look at the types of injuries we might have. Does that make sense? And, uh, and examine them a bit more closely. So, you notice in the section, God's, um, this section, sexuality from God's perspective, there's a few little things I'd like to discuss though with regard what is basic sexuality. Remember in our introductory sessions that we drew the soul thus, the two halves of the soul, right? And we said that those two halves, when they split, could turn out to have a male body on both sides, or a female body on one side. So basically, each half could be connected to a male or a female body. Does that make sense? Now, if the soul itself, the whole combined soul, is dominantly feminine in nature, when it splits, it will attract two feminine bodies. So that is what you would call nowadays on Earth, a sex, in terms of a sexual relationship, a lesbian relationship, right? It could also, if it was dominantly masculine, the entire soul, when it splits, it would split into two male bodies, which is what on Earth you would call a homosexual relationship. Right? Or a gay relationship. Then there's the split where if, it, if it's a mixture of masculine and feminine, when it splits, it was split into a male body and a female body. Right? Now that obviously would be sexually a heterosexual relationship. Agree? So can you see that actually there is no bisexuality in that? So bisexuality, the feeling inside of ourselves that we're attracted to both males and females, sexually attracted to both males and females comes from soul injuries within us and by the way they don't come from our own soul injuries it comes from soul injuries within our parents not within ourselves generally you also um, now that is quite controversial to say right for a lot of people a lot of people will find that quite controversial AJ, can you give an um, well, let, let's illustrate it from a soul perspective first. If this is a male, if this is a dominantly masculine soul, and this is a dominantly, uh, so the dominantly masculine combined soul I'm talking, then it's going to split into two male bodies. Right? So that's one possibility. If it's a dominantly feminine soul, this will be feminine and this will be mostly feminine, so it will split into two female bodies. Right? The alternative is if, if it's a sort of half-half, if you like, male-female, then one half will be male, one half will be female, and one side will be male and one side will be female. But you notice in each case there is no, there's, there's not an attraction to two genders. 
So any attraction that develops within us to both genders comes from emotional injuries within our parents generally. And it's to do with their emotional injuries regarding sexuality in most cases. Well, let's look at bisexuality. If, if a person is bisexual, that means they have an attraction, sexual attraction, to men and women. And this is concurrent sexual attraction, is it not? A sexual attraction to men and a sexual attraction to women at the same time. It exists within them at the same time. Now, if we're only a half of a soul, is that actually possible at the soul level? So if it's not possible at the soul level, and it's happening at the physical level, the only answer can be that there has to be due to emotional injuries occurring inside of the soul. But if we're at one with your soul. When you say at one with your soul, what do you mean? Well, if you have a soulmate, you're at one, why can't you have them both? You're at one with your own sexuality. Well, that's the 20 second sphere state. Okay, so why can't you be bisexual with the 21? You, the, soul, the soul isn't made to have sexual relationships with other souls. It's made to have a sexual relationship with itself. This is what I'm saying. I know it's highly confrontational, but it's exactly what I'm saying about God's truth. So, what I'm saying is from God's perspective, God created the two soul halves to eventually merge into one. Now, if the two soul halves emerge into one, they will not even desire a sexual relationship with another entity. Do you follow me? And, and so, if we desire a sexual relationship with multiple partners, we need to look very strongly at the emotional injuries within us that would actually cause us to do that. And usually it's deep levels of dissatisfaction in us regarding each relationship, but there might be many, many types of injuries associated with that. You were going to say something? I was just going to point out, it's similar to... Um like each half of the soul has its innate um, sexual identity and attraction. Um, but often throughout life, as a result of different injuries, emo sexual, emotional injuries, that um, sexual um, preference, if you like, can be tainted. So there, there are people on earth today living as homosexuals who actually have heterosexual um, soul qualities and they're actually people who are living as heterosexuals who in their pristine state are actually a homosexual soul, if that makes sense. So for me the issue of bisexuality falls very much in that similar category. There's an injury or a confusion around sexual identity that um, is causing the confusion. Yeah, and um, let me give you an example of this. Like. A few years ago, I had a chat with, a spirit, with some spirits that had passed. It was a male and a female spirit who came to me. And they wanted to talk because the, the male spirit was in the first sphere, but he was in quite a high condition in the first sphere. And the female spirit was in a low condition. She was in one of the hells of the first sphere. They had been married when they were on earth. So what had happened is the male her, the male spirit had passed first, right? So what had happened is he had, he had passed, he had died and passed, and then five years later his wife died and passed. And two years after that, they came to speak with me. So that the male had been passed seven years now, and the female for two years. Now the, the reason why they came to me was because they wanted to know the male was trying to help the female spirit to get her into a better condition so that they could both live together. In other words, they wanted to continue their husband and wife relationship that they had while they were on earth in the spirit world. And the female spirit was getting very angry with the male spirit, right? And the reason why is the male spirit was living in a higher place, which was more beautiful, and she kept on saying, why can't you take me there? Right? Why can't I can't be there with you? And he was saying, well, you can't. You know, they tried, they tried to make it happen. They couldn't make it happen. It was too painful for her. 
And so in the end, she was consigned to living in this in this hellish place, and he was and he lived in this higher first year state near Summerland. And he then uh, he then she then said to him, "Well, why don't you come and live with me? Well, would you want to? <laughs> you know, would you want to go and live in the hell with somebody uh, if you?" already were living in a place that was quite pretty and nice. Well, obviously, he didn't want to do that either. And that was one of the reasons why she was quite angry. Anyway, both of them came to me and started talking about their situation, how they could get out of the situation. The specific question that they asked was, the, the lady wanted to know how she could be in the same place as the man was in. Then I described this thing called, remember I talk about it quite often, called soul condition. So I talked to them about soul condition, what soul condition was. And soul condition is a reflection of all of your emotions and how harmonious they are with natural love or divine love. And I said to her that she had a poorer soul condition than her mate, than the man. And the reason why she had was while they were on earth, she dominated the relationship. So in other words, all of her life together with him on earth she was constantly pressuring him to do things which he went ahead and did. And he eventually was very oppressed by the relationship. So he passed, and then she passed, and she still expected to oppress him in the spirit world as well. Right? She wanted to keep that going. So I talked to her about her soul condition. Now she wasn't very interested in that at all. She was quite dismissive. How can that be? You know, She was questioning, she was criticising me being occasionally sarcastic with me as well. And, but the man was very interested. So the man asked more questions. And then I started talking about soulmates. And it turned out that the man, within a very short space of time, started realising that maybe his wife wasn't his soulmate. And as soon as he started feeling that, his wife felt the whole soulmate issue herself, even though she was in the house. And she immediately attracted her soulmate, who came to her, who happened to also be in the hills. And they just went off. They didn't bother talking to me anymore. That was the end of our conversation. They just went off, and he wasn't with her anymore from that moment. Right? And then he started, we started talking about soulmates with him. And I felt that his soul was actually a gay soul. It was, his, his soulmate was male. And once we started talking about all that, he knew who that was, and he straight away started resolving some of these sexual injuries within himself. So he was living in a heterosexual relationship all of his life on earth, and for two years in the spirit world after his wife joined him as well. And yet after all of that, all it required was one discussion about his feelings about sexuality, and he realised that actually he was gay. Now, that happens all the time in the spirit world, where people on earth have lived in heterosexual relationships due to emotional pressures of all different types, and yet when they've passed in the spirit world, realised that actually they were gay. Right? 